I wouldn't even be able to do what I do if, if the goal wasn't for every single time I go to do a new piece that it's more beautiful than anything I ever designed before. There's such a satisfaction to, to what things look like, to beauty, to me. I like to say that anger can be a really good motivator. When I started 12 years ago, I was angry at how lighting was being driven by large manufacturers. And I wanted to do things of not just great beauty, but of great quality. I locked myself essentially in, in a room in my home office and I, I drew. I honestly did nothing but draw for six months and I drew my first collection. When I was done with that, it was clear that it was gonna have to be uh, cast in bronze. I made a commitment that, that this, these designs, there was no other good way to make them. It's unforgiving work, completely unforgiving. You have to be able to see it as clearly in your head as someone else could see a memory of something they know well. I think you need a construct to design within. I have a, a library that's on one subject, and that's residential architecture from 1880 to 1920. There are houses that I've never been in, there are houses that don't exist anymore, that I know really, really well, and I live inside that mood and that, that beauty and that space. For me, to be modern, I don't go forward, I go back. I look at things that weren't meant to be beautiful or weren't meant to be a light fixture. There are often systems in buildings that have an amazingly beautiful pattern of repetition. Something like the canela is really just a series of plumbing fixtures. It's just that beautiful, no-nonsense, no-decoration repetition of geometric form. I think that if you can identify a shape or an idea that's beautiful unto itself, then the process of making it modern and relevant is something that I can do all day long. The pull, the, the magnet, is always pulling towards the minimal whenever I do anything. But it's the exploration of how do you add ornament and, and how do you get away with that? How do you get away with making something uh, you know, pretty? It's designed with an intent to be gorgeous unto itself. And then if someone augments that by using it really well in the right space, then it gets even better. I'm hoping that it's just a moment that when that person is sitting in a dining room with that chandelier or walking down a hallway with my sconces, that there's that moment where you just feel and you see and you're aware of the beauty of it.